Hey guys, so um, in today's video we will discuss the next steps on our VESC XR build. Unfortunately, we won't be writing it yet. Uh, I'm still waiting for a part. If you just want to take the standard parts and put together an XR as quickly as possible, then uh, feel free to skip this video. But if you're interested in an external Bluetooth or enhanced pull-down resistors for your foot sensors, we'll be talking about that in this video. But yeah, unfortunately, I won't be writing it today. It took me a little while to take the next step and uh, finish up the controller box because I've been waiting for another part and uh, it still hasn't arrived and it's the next weekend and uh, I really just want to try riding this thing so I was getting impatient and uh, I'm building it now anyway without my uh, most favorite addition which is the uh, buzzer so um, I will have to add the buzzer later. But I want to show you quickly what else I did to enhance the uh, experience. So the built-in Bluetooth works great for configuring it when you're on the bench, when you're uh, at home, and uh, it works great for downloading firmware. All that is pretty reliable. I've never had an issue really. But when you're riding, and there's currents going through the controller. For some reason, the Bluetooth signal keeps cutting out and uh, my app keeps getting disconnected. So that was getting kind of annoying. And now I've added a Bluetooth module, which you can see right here. And um, I have Basically, this external Bluetooth module gives you a second Bluetooth to connect to, and that one is super reliable. I've had that on my other, um, I've had that on my other one wheels. It's a Nerf NRF 51X. You can find those on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Definitely worth it. It's a little bit tricky to set up if you don't know how to solder, so, so you need to find a friend who knows how to solder because that's not something that's easily done. Then another thing I did not like about the default configuration of the Little Fokker is the pull-down resistors for the ADCs, for the foot sensors. Um, they are 10 kilo ohms, which makes them a little bit slow, meaning that uh, sometimes quick stop is hard to catch and uh, basically it takes a long time to go from the on state to the off state. So if you're stepping off the foot pad, it can take longer than 50 milliseconds for the um, ADC voltage to go down from whatever three volts to your switch voltage. And that can be too long for a quick stop. And um, I've had really good experience with a one kilo ohm resistor on my other one wheel, the, the fun wheel that I built. So I want to try that in here as well. So those are two one kilo ohm resistors. You can't really see them in there, but they're hidden behind that um, shrink wrap, the black shrink wrap. Um, and yeah, so that all connects to the seven pin connector that is right here. So this one here has the Bluetooth module and the um, ADC pull-down resistors. And then one other thing I did is because at first I will reuse the stock XR battery box. Originally my plan was to just take out the BMS and not worry about the BMS until I realized that the BMS that is built into the XR has a huge advantage over any non-BMS or standard BMS solutions. And that is, it has the ability to turn the one wheel on and off. And it has a inactivity timeout. So after like 10 minutes of no activity, no current coming or no current being pulled by the controller, the BMS 
shuts off the battery and it really shuts it off meaning there is no current coming into the controller so that's kind of nice and so what i did is i kept the momentary switch you can keep the switch that comes with the one wheel but uh, just to make it a little bit different i found this switch for ten dollars on amazon and uh, it's black and then the led is green so it will look different from standard one wheels and all you have to do is you have um, that one pin that controls the uh, on off state needs to be connected to this pin right here which is that blue wire going to the bms so this big pin in the the left in the front this one needs that wire connected and the rest just goes to ground and then one goes to the led control or um, the 3.3 volts for the led so that will allow me to just reuse the on off functionality of the bms and will give me inactivity timeout, meaning if I leave, if I forget to turn the one wheel off, it shuts itself off. I don't have to worry about um, storing it for a longer time or anything like that. And I tend to forget to turn off my one wheel a lot. So um, this is a really nice feature. And at least I'll have it until I build my, my own battery for this XR. I also have to say it is very tricky to get this controller to fit into the enclosure like this with all the wires um, the way the enclosure is made you need to have the battery wires come out here they go underneath and come out on the other side you can't flip it the other way which i tried first so it has to be this way and then you really have to be very very diligent to not have any wires going over the bridges but they have to go through that through those openings so that when you push the controller down that it does sit perfectly flush you really should be checking your controller so that when you look at it like this to make sure that it's not crooked and um, i can see it is crooked again it kind of doesn't want to stay in place so you got to push it down really good and make sure that when you put the um, the uh, lid on there that it is in perfect position. Otherwise, if there is an angle to your controller and you push the lid down, then the MOSFETs won't be equally pressed against the aluminum, which is really important because of the cooling. Also for the cooling, I kind of regret not even getting a thicker um, thermal pad. You do need a thermal pad. It's not optional. Without that pad, your MOSFETs will fry instantly as soon as you start to power the motor. I know that because my very first fun wheel, that's exactly what I did. I didn't have the thermal pad yet and I powered it on and they fried. So don't do it. You actually want to pick a really good thermal pad, in my opinion. Um, they have these here. You want to look for thermal conductivity that says 12.8 watts per whatever it is, milli Kelvin or something. Probably not, but 12.8. The cheap stuff has like six watts of thermal conductivity. And um, you really want the maximum possible if you want to keep your MOSFETs cool. And trust me, you do want to keep them cool. Okay, so I just learned something else that uh, you may want to avoid. Once you stick this lid on, the thermal pad will stick to the lid really good. And then if you need to open it again, the lid will pull the controller off of its stand and everything will get messed up. I forgot to put the gasket down before putting the, oh no, shit, very sticky. 
So um, I forgot to put the gasket down and I had the lid on there and um, yeah, that pulled it off and now I got to start over rearranging all the wires, making sure that none of them get pinched. I think one of the JSTs got pulled out. So yeah, very messy and uh, thermal compound, very the thermal pad is very sticky. So careful with that. So yeah, that was it. Unfortunately, we didn't get to finish it. We still don't get to ride it but uh, I do want to wait for that buzzer. I don't want to put it all together and then have to take it apart again because the way the wires are arranged, it's all spring-loaded inside that enclosure. And then when you take off the lid, all the wires will come out. And uh, I don't want to do that more than once. And I don't want to ride without the buzzer because for the firmware development I'm doing, I really need that buzzer. It really helps me a lot. So. I need to wait for that and uh, hopefully we'll get to finish it really soon.